Joining me now is the Democratic Representative Jake Auchincloss of Massachusetts. He's a veteran of the United States Marines, having served in Afghanistan and Panama. Representative, good to see you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. The world's a little upside down. You've got uh, Democrats trying to get this funding to Ukraine. You've got Republicans um, blocking it ostensibly for some other reason. You even had Vladimir Zelensky come to Congress and say, I totally get it. You've got domestic political issues. I'm not trying to get involved in that. You guys should sort that out however you want. But could you please not let us lose the war because of them? Seems to have fallen on deaf ears in Congress. For sure. Uh and let's zero in on Ukraine here. It is the best return on investment in America's 21st century, 21st century national security policy. Uh, for less than Americans spend on soft drinks every year, the United States has made NATO stronger. It has made Russia weaker. It has sent a message, not just to the Kremlin, but to Beijing and Tehran, that the United States is going to defend the rules-based order and staying with freedom and democracy. And we have done so with no American lives lost and keeping Ukraine in this fight for another year when the experts said they wouldn't last for more than a couple of weeks. Uh, but now we have Republicans who would rather support Donald Trump's campaign for dictator than Vladimir Zelensky's campaign for freedom. And that has become the bottleneck in Congress. And that's why, Ali, back in September, when Speaker McCarthy offered a continuing resolution, I voted for it, but said it, would be, it was going to be the last time that I bailed out Republicans from their dysfunction mm -hmm. unless they had a clear, credible, and concrete plan for Ukraine. And I've stood by my word. The next two continuing resolutions I have voted against because Democrats should not be bailing Republicans out of their dysfunction unless Americans get a win in return. Ukraine is a win. This uh, tax deal is a win. Border security is a win. But Republicans aren't moving on any of it. Yeah, I think this is an important point you make uh, because you are one of only, I think, two uh, Democrats who voted against the continuing resolution to, to make the point that um, this is really important. As a military person, you also understand as it relates to Ukraine, and I think it's really important that you made the point about the return on investment that we're getting. There are no U.S. troops there, nor is Ukraine asking for any, and yet we're holding a major adversary at bay and sending a message to other potential adversaries. Um, the, the, the issue here is is... If you lose the military advantage, if, if Ukraine loses the military advantage, it becomes much harder to change your decision later on, to decide in you know, next November or December, hey, we'd like to get back in the game and, and, and give uh, Ukraine the edge. Can't win a lost war. We need to support Ukraine now as they still have a lion's heart to fight, as they still have a strong leader, and they are asking for the material and the munitions that they need to gain secure access to the Black Sea, to uh, be able to uh, create their own military industrial complex so that they can sustain their fight, and for security guarantees that will allow them to fully join the West and ultimately the European Union, which is their aspiration as a people. One of the things about Russia and Vladimir Putin is he's been, he's been the president of that country, but for a small period when he was just the prime minister of the country for a very, very long time. He's got a long time horizon. Um, and and if, this concept, if this concept of waiting America out works, waiting America out until there's a new president or a new administration works, that is a message to China, to North Korea, to Iran, to other adversaries that um, America doesn't stick to its guns. It doesn't stay with its commitments. That's going to affect us not just with our NATO allies and, and the other 20 countries that are with us in Ukraine, but really possibly more importantly with the message that it sends to our adversaries. That is so right on. Uh, Vladimir Putin has a two-word strategy, Trump wins. In the long run, he cannot win this war with facing unified Western resolve. We can defeat Vladimir Putin, uh, and Vladimir Putin knows that, which is why uh, he is vesting his military strategy around Donald Trump cutting and running from uh, his allies. And it's not just the Kremlin who knows that. It's Beijing, too. I, I recently met with the new Taiwanese ambassador to the United States, and he made clear that in the recent Taiwanese election, uh, the People's Republic was pumping in disinformation to the, to the Taiwanese island, particularly to young people, saying, you can't count on the United States. It's a fair-weather friend. Why don't you go towards reunification, because we'll protect you instead. And so this message is not just a European message. It's not just a Ukrainian message. It's an Indo-Pacific message as well that is going to define uh, much of the great power competition of the 21st century. Does the United States still have the resolve to defend its values the world over? 
And Donald Trump does not. Joe Biden does. And that is part of what's at stake in this election. It would be interesting if there was a decision to not have that resolve. But what we're seeing is just dysfunction leading to an accidental lack of resolve. Uh, and that would be a disaster if we, if we by accident, fell into a, a weak position in the world. Uh, Congressman, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. You too. The Democratic Representative Jake Auchincloss of Massachusetts. All right, up next, we got the...